Hi guys! So, uh, reading for the day, we're still in chapter 7, and he just learned a new way to maybe catch a hoon to help train his dogs um, from his grandpa. So we're still hearing about that. He looked over at me. Well, what do you think of it, he asked. I closed my eyes, and in my mind I could see the funnel-like entrance of the hole and the sharp slanting points of the nails. I could see the coon reaching in for the shiny piece of metal. Naturally, his paw would be much larger when closed than it was when he reached in. So kind of like this. And you go in, but if I'm coming out, it's like this. It would be impossible for it to pass the sharp nails. It was all looking pretty good to me, and I was on the point of saying so when it hit me. Why, all the coon had to do was open his paw, drop the object, and he was free. It all blew up then and there. I just knew my grandfather was playing a joke on me. I stepped back and almost cried as I said, Grandpa, you're kidding me. That kind of trap couldn't catch a coon. Why, all he'd have to do is open his paw, drop the piece of tin, and, be, and he could pull it from the hole. Grandpa started roaring with laughter. This did make me feel bad, and with tears in my eyes, I started for the door. Wait a minute, Grandpa said. I'm not kidding you. Oh, I know I like to have my jokes, same as any man, but I meant every word I said. I turned around and looked at him. He'd stopped laughing, and there was a hurt expression on his face. I wasn't laughing at you, he said. I was laughing more at myself than you. I just wanted to see if you were smart enough to see that there was a way the coon could free himself. A fellow wouldn't have to be very smart to see that, I said. Grandpa started talking seriously again. You know, he said, a coon has more than one peculiarity about him. When I was a boy, I had a pet coon. By watching him, I saw and learned a lot of things. He had a den in an old hollow tree in our front yard. I don't know the number of times I had to climb that tree and get my mother's scissors or buttons, needles, and thimble from his den. Why, he even carry out our knives, forks, and spoons. Anything that was bright and shiny, he took to his den. Grandpa stopped talking for a few minutes. I could see a faraway look in his eyes. Once again, he was living in those long ago days. I waited in silence for him to go on with his story. One of the most peculiar things about that coon, he said, was his front feet. Once he wrapped those little paws around something, he would never let go. My mother had an old churn. It was one of those kind with a small hole in the lid for the dasher, and when she would get through churning, she would take the dasher out to wash it. That crazy coon would climb up on the top of the churn, poke his little front paw into the hole, and get a fistful of butter. The hole was small, and when he closed his paw, he couldn't get it back out. All he had to do was open it, drop the butter, and he would be free. But do you think he would? No, sir. He would carry that churn lid all over the house, squalling and growling. Why, it took everyone in the house to free him. I'd have to wrap him up in a gunny sack or an old coat and pry his claws loose from the butter. Seeing this time after time, it was what gave me the idea for this trap. Once he reaches in and gets hold of that tin, he's caught because he will never open his paw. With my confidence restored, it all sounded pretty good to me, and I was anxious to try out this wonderful plan. I thanked him, and taking the brace and nails, I left the store. By the time I reached home, it was too late in the day to start making my traps. That night, I talked the idea over with Papa. I've heard of coons being caught that way, he said, but I never paid much attention to it. Your grandfather should know, though, for he was quite a coon hunter when he was a boy. From what he told me, I said, it never fails. Papa asked if I wanted him to help make the traps. No, I said, I can think I can do it myself. I didn't sleep too well that night. I bored holes, drove nails, and fought coons practically all night in my sleep. Early the next morning, I went to the trash pile. As I stirred around in the rusty old cans, I thought of another time that I had searched for a can. Finally, I found the one that I wanted. It was bright and shiny. Everything was going along just fine until Mama caught me cutting out the circles of tin with her scissors. I always swore she could find the biggest switches of any woman in the Ozarks. That time she overdid it. I was almost to the river before the stinging stopped. It wasn't hard to find places for my traps. All along the river, large sycamore logs lay partly submerged in the clear blue water. 
On one, where I could see the muddy little tracks of the ringtails, I bored a hole, dropped in a piece of tin, and drove in my nails. On down the river I went, making my traps. I stopped when I ran out of nails. Altogether, I had 14 traps. That night, Papa asked me how I was making out. All right, I said, I've gotten 14 of them made. He laughed and said, well, you can't ever tell. You may catch one. The next morning, I was up with the chickens. I took my pups with me as I just knew I'd have a big ringtail trapped, and I wanted to see it. I was disappointed, boy, when I peeked out of a cane break at my last trap, and I didn't see a coon. All the way home, I tried to figure out what I'd done wrong. I went to Papa, and he put his thinking cap on and thought the situation over. Well, maybe you left too much scent around you when you made those traps, he said. If you did, it'll take a while for it to go away. Now, I wouldn't get too impatient. I'm pretty sure you'll catch one sooner or later. Papa's words perked me up, just like the air does a deflated inner tube. He was right. I had simply left too much scent around my traps. All I had to do was wait until it disappeared, and I'd have my coon hide. Morning after morning, it was the same old disappointment. No coon. When a week had gone by and still no results from my traps, I gave up. What little patience I had was completely gone. I was firmly convinced that coons didn't walk on sycamore logs anymore, and bright, shiny objects had about as much effect on them as a coon hound would. One morning, I didn't get up to run my trap line. I stayed in bed. What was the use? It was just a waste of time. When the family sat down to breakfast, I heard my oldest sister say, Mama, isn't Billy going to get up for breakfast? Why? Is he in his room? Mama asked. I didn't know. I thought he was down looking at his traps. I heard Papa say, I'll go and wake him. He came to the door and said, You'd better get up, Billy. Breakfast is ready. I don't want any breakfast, I said. I'm not hungry. Papa took one look at me and saw I had a bad case of the ringtail blues. He came over and sat down on the bed. What's the matter, he asked. You having coon trouble? Grandpa lied to me, Papa, I said. I should have known better. Who ever heard of anyone catching a coon with a brace and a bit and a few horseshoe nails? I wouldn't say that, Papa said. I don't think your grandpa deliberately lied to you. Besides, I've heard of coons being caught that way. Well, I don't think I've done anything wrong, I said. I've done everything exactly as he said, and I haven't caught one yet. I still think it's the scent, Papa said. You know, someone told me, or I read it somewhere, that it takes about a week for a scent to die away. How long has it been since you made those traps? It's been over a week, I said. Well, the way I figure, it's about time for you to catch one. Yes, sir, I wouldn't be surprised if you came in with, anyone in, with one any day now. After Papa left the room, I lay thinking of what he'd said. Any day now. I got up, and I hurried into my clothes. All right, guys. I'll read some more for you tomorrow. I miss you guys. I hope you're well. Make sure that you're checking Google Classroom every day to see if I've posted new things like Flipgrid or some Google Slide for you to do or some kind of research for you to do. Uh, take care. See you tomorrow.